Hey guys, how's it going? Rex Barrett with Leak Project. How many of you feel that at one point in time there was life on Mars, such as very structured life, similar to maybe the way things are going here now on planet Earth? Or maybe something like the Egyptian times where they had so much power and might around the world with the, you know, the great pharaohs, the great pyramids, etc. The reason I ask is what I'm about to share with you, in my opinion, is the best evidence that I have seen yet of there being very advanced life on Mars, either still now or many years ago, because there was an image released by NASA, and I'm going to share that with you now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type in Victoria Crater. You can see here we're going to do a quick tour. Type that in. Hit enter. This is taking us to Victoria Crater, where the Opportunity rover had the chance to do a tour. And who knows if it's still sending back infor information or not. But you can see this red line. This is essentially the path that it took. And we're going to go over here to Cape Verde. We're going to get an image inside the crater. And this is going to give you a good reference point to where this high-resolution image is that I'm going to share with you of what looks like a statue carved into the cliffside. And every person that I asked, I showed them this image, and I didn't tell them where it was from. They thought that it was some type of pharaoh or statue carved in a cliff or a mountainside in the Middle East. And it's not. It's on Mars. Or at least that's what NASA is telling us. Some of you may think that everything that NASA tells you is a lie. I don't, but I have seen things before that point to the possibility of a lot of the stuff they show us from the rovers could actually be in the Middle East and in certain desert areas, but that's a whole other podcast. If you believe this is on Mars, the image I'm about to share with you is, in my opinion, undeniable. So that there was advanced life on Mars at one point in time. Maybe not necessarily now, but certainly before and not that long ago in the whole scheme of things. So this is kind of a reference point just to share with you. Now I'm going to turn this off. This image we're looking at is the image that I was referring to. You can download this on NASA's website. I'll give you the link here in a minute. This is the highest resolution image that I could find. It is a 16 megapixel resolution image. So I'm going to go very high res here in a minute. This, or I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna zoom in in a minute and show you the area that I'm talking about. But just take a look at this image. Look towards the right, and I would say at about the three o'clock position on that cliffside. And let me know if you notice anything a little bit strange. And we'll zoom in on that here. Okay, so I'm gonna zoom in. Take a look to the right there. You notice anything a little bit out of place? You might notice that there's a what looks like a clear pathway that was carved into the cliff here, or into the rocks. It, you can see the, the typical weather patterns that you'll see a lot of times here in the U.S. If you look at the rocks, you'll see those lines, and they found that in... You know, the Pharaoh of Egypt, they found all sorts of antiquity, statues of antiquity, and just plenty of geography here at home that you can see regular weather patterns from wind and rain causes this type of lines in the rock side. But look at the, the perfect symmetrical lines. It looks like a pathway that goes down to this structure we're going to look at here in a minute. But before we get to that, I'm going to zoom in very close, and I want to show a couple of anomalies here that I can see where they photoshopped, where it was definitely photoshopped. Oh, there's the structure we're going to look at in a minute, but I'm, and that's where the pathway ends as well. Okay, so here we go. I don't know if you noticed yet or not. I'm going to zoom in even more here. And I'm going to turn off my video so we can look specifically. Okay.
Now, you might notice a couple of areas in this path. I'm just going to call it a path, but you'll see a couple of areas here where there was some Photoshop work done. Do you see that one box that's clearly out of place? It's like they used a specific Photoshop tool to block that area, use a similar color, but you can tell that's not natural. That shouldn't be with the image. So, hey, maybe I'm just looking into it too much. We're not even getting into the, we're not even at the good stuff yet, but these are some anomalies that I'm pointing out. And you'll see a couple of other areas If you look down here, you'll see a couple of other areas where they did the same thing, where they like blocked it out. So I don't know if there was something, some type of antique or piece of sculpture or something there that they were trying to block out. So they used a Photoshop tool, but you can see it right there. You can see three different spots clearly that they did some type of Photoshop before this image was released. So now we're going to scroll down a little bit more on this path here. And take a look at that. What does that look like to you guys? And that's where the path ends, mind you. Now, what I want to know is, if that's natural, from just regular weather or typical weather patterns on Mars, then how come there's aren't, there isn't those lines that are going across it? And then how come if you look at it, it's got two symmetrical eyes, it's got a nose, it's got an elongated skull, which in my opinion, this could be what's talked about here as the Nephilim. You know, if you look at L.A. Marzulli's work, he's got a great series called Watchers, and you can see some video footage and images that he's taken of these elongated skulls. And in my opinion, they look very similar to this. Now, once again, if this is just regular weather patterns, then how come this doesn't have the same lines running across it? And how come it looks like it was carved into the cliffside? I mean, look at that. You can see that it was carved into the cliffside right there. It's got shoulders. It's got a body. It's got a nose. It's got eyes. It's got a mouth. It's got the chin. It's got the elongated skull. And I'm telling you, I'm not the kind of person that sees faces in clouds and says, that's a person or that's a being. I'll see a face in a cloud. I'll say, oh, yeah, cool. It's a cloud that looks like a face, you know? So I get that. Maybe I'm looking into this too much. And maybe every person that I showed this image to before I told them where it was from that said they thought it was a statue carved somewhere in the Middle East, maybe it was all in their imagination as well, too. Because it certainly seems like once you tell people where this is from, a lot of times, the cognitive dissonance kicks in. They believe everything that they were told in school in regards to extraterrestrial life on other planets, such as Mars and planets in our own solar system. You know, we're always looking for life on planets that are so far away we can't see them. Well, why not think about the possibility of there being life back in our own backyard? Now, I'm going to show you some images of statues that were carved in the Middle East, Afghanistan, Iraq. Here we go. Take a look at that. fascinating. So if you go look at one of those skulls that I'm referring to, and then go back to this image, now the image reference is PIA10210. Here we go. This is a close-up of the image we're just looking at. And what I did to the right here is I took a I took the picture, I changed the color a little bit, and you can see even more detail. I didn't add any detail to it, I just changed the color. 
there's a setting on my GarageBand iMovie where you can easily change the color here. And it just gives it a little more depth, in my opinion, where you can see that this was somehow carved into the rock side here. You can see the typical weather patterns outside of it and the way that it was carved several feet inside of it. And then, as I showed you before, the way that the that path, you know, with the symmetrical lines, it goes down to this directly. I think that's interesting. Now, there's other places in this image that has what looks like perfect shelves almost. And there's other parts that look very strange as well, but nothing like this. I mean, this to me, once again, is about as good as you're going to get unless you can actually touch it yourself and see maybe a, a, a picture that you took there personally with your smartphone. But I'd love your opinion on it. I'd really like to hear what you think. Send us an email, guestbookings at leafproject.com. Make sure to support our top shelf sponsors. If you're interested in putting together a nest egg in precious metals, check out Noble Gold. Uh, I know the owner. He's a very nice person. I have gold and silver from Noble Gold. You know, top shelf service as well as great prices. Also, check out GetTheTea.com. I love their products. I've been taking it now for a few weeks, and I feel amazing. And also, One Tack Tactical Gear. I'll make sure to leave these links at the top of the video description box. And that's my shameless plug. Ladies and gentlemen, question everything and be the change you want to see.